Hi guys, welcome back. We are going to see how the DFT equation works to extract the amplitudes of the frequency components present in the time domain signal in this part. Let's get started. As we know, the famous equation that works on the time domain signal to bring out the frequency components is given here. X of k is equal to sigma of x of n into e power minus j 2 pi k n divided by n. x of k is the kth DFT output component and it holds the amplitude value for the index k. k runs from 0 to n minus 1. n is the number of samples in the input sequence. x of n is the samples of the input sequence and n is the time domain index which also runs from 0 to n minus 1. This equation is actually in an exponential form. It is little bit unfriendly to understand what is going on inside this equation. So we have to convert it into a rectangular form by expanding it using Euler's equation. The Euler's equation is e power minus j theta is equal to cos theta minus j sin theta. So e power minus j 2 pi k n divided by n is expanded as cos 2 pi k n divided by n minus j sin 2 pi k n divided by n. Next, we expand this equation further by running the value n from 0 to n minus 1. The expanded equation is given here. Please give you a little bit insight in this equation and try to understand what is happening here. There are two set of waves. One is sine waves and the other one is cosine waves. Based on sampling frequency, set of sine waves and cosine waves are generated. The frequency of sine and cosine waves are given by k into fs by n. Suppose if our sampling frequency is 8 kHz and the number of points are 8, then the sine and cosine waves have the frequencies 0, 1 kHz, 2 kHz, up to 7 kHz. So, when k is equal to 0, the frequency is 0 Hz, that is DC component. Similarly, k is equal to 1 corresponds to 1 kHz and k is equal to 2 corresponds to 2 kHz and so forth. Notice here that we are doing sum of point for point multiplication between the input signal and sinusoids of particular frequency with index k. As I told you just before, when k is equal to 0, the frequency is 0, that is DC. When k is equal to 1, frequency is 1 kHz and so on. Reflect a minute on this big equation and try to understand what is actually going on here. I know you got the answer. What is actually happening here is that we are just correlating the input signal to a particular sinusoid to figure out whether that particular sinusoid is present in our input samples or not. If it presents, then it will give the amplitude value. If not, then it will give the output value of 0, which means there is no correlation. For example, if we take the case when k is equal to 2, that is for 2 kHz, we are multiplying the samples of 2 kHz sinusoids to the input signal. We are correlating, probing, and try to find out if the input signal has this 2 kHz sine or cosine component. If it presents, then it will give the value of the amplitude. If the 2 kHz component is not present in the input signal, then there is no correlation between the input samples and the sinusoids of 2 kHz. So, 0 will be the output. Consider two signals which are having the same frequency and pace then if we multiply these two signals, then the result will be nothing but the amplification. Because there is a strong correlation between the signals. If we multiply two signals with the different frequencies, then there is no correlation between the two and the output will be zero. This is how DFT works to find out whether the particular frequency component is present in the input samples or not. So the bottom line is this. In DFT, we are actually doing correlation to probe the input samples to
to check the particular frequency component is present or not. Let's try to understand this with an example in our next lesson. See you in that lesson. Until then, bye bye.